Vitamin B3 is incredibly important for mitochondrial function. Um, when it comes to the energy synthesizing functions of the mitochondria, which uh, is making this stuff called ATP, adenosine triphosphate, um, in order for that synthesis to happen, um, a number of these molecules called NADH um, and NADPH molecules have to be generated, and those NAD molecules are based on vitamin B3. Um, and so, the, so vitamin B3, you know, incredibly important for cellular energy production. So um, because of that fact, um, that it is so important, there are a number of, there's been a lot of interest in, well, what's the best form of vitamin B3 to work with to help optimize mitochondrial function? Um, there has been some interesting studies showing that things that help to specifically increase the amount of NAD um, help with overall mitochondrial health and promote longevity and things like that. And so the question is, well, what precursors can, should be taken or administered to get the best results? So supplementally, you can take NAD, you can take NADH, you can take something called um, a nicotinamide riboside, um, you can take uh, niacinamide, you can take um, regular niacin. Um, so there are all these different vitamin B3 forms that can be taken supplementally. And <clears throat> some folks talk about how like, well, this is the best form to take because it's you know better absorbed um, according to clinical trials, or this is the best form to take because it's only one enzymatic step away from NAD, or this is the form to take because it's actual NAD and you're just ingesting the kind of that final product that you're looking for and so um, it can be a little bit challenging or confusing to navigate those waters um, <clears throat> so in all of the research that I've done uh, or all of the work I've done looking through the research I'm not conducting these studies but by golly I, I sure do spend a lot of time reading studies um, putting together lectures and things like that for um, conferences that I speak at or courses that I'm teaching and so looking at the actual literature um, you know I, I would say unfortunately there's not nearly as much literature as one might expect when you see some of the claims that are made about like oh this this form of vitamin B3 is definitely the best one to work with or you know um, like this is the one that you should definitely spend you know the, the, the fancier the B3 the more expensive it is so like spend more money on this because it's you know got better bioavailability of this or that but um, the two things that I kind of look at those uh, claims or products through the lens of the two lenses that I look at that through one is well what does the actual research show and in some cases there are some studies that show that there is improved bioavailability of certain forms of um, vitamin b3 like nicotinamide riboside being one of them um, now if memory serves I believe they're animal studies not human clinical trials but that's that's okay you know it's still showing some improved bioavailability but then the other um, lens would be well what actually seems to help in Clinical practice. So the patients that I've worked with who've either used you know, intravenous NAD or intravenous NADH, or they've taken supplemental NADH, or they've taken just plain old niacinamide, which is incredibly inexpensive in comparison, or they've taken the nicotinamide riboside, you know, what's actually made the biggest difference? Um, in my clinical experience, I haven't really seen any significant difference from one form of vitamin B3 to the other. Um, I've had Patients, you know, work with a formula that um, have like work with mitochondrial support formulas that have the fancier forms of vitamin B3 in there. They're seeing clinical benefit. We switch them over to you know another formula that has all the same ingredients, but the less expensive form of vitamin B3 didn't really notice a difference in terms of the efficacy. I've had a couple of patients over the years who say, you know, I started taking my nicotinamide riboside supplement or my NAD supplement and it really helped and that's great. But the vast majority of patients that I've seen who have tried more than one type of vitamin B3 um, generally don't report any significant difference in how it makes them feel uh, with their energy. Now, maybe the fancier forms will help with longevity and this and that, but it's really hard to tell that clinically because you never know how long somebody's going to live for and there's lots of factors that go into our longevity. Um, and I certainly haven't seen any clinical trials that have um, looked at that you know, as a specific outcome, definitely not in humans. Um, but not even in animal studies that I've come across, at least. If you're watching this video and you're like, oh, I saw one of those studies, like by all means, please send me the uh, send me the link to that study. I'd love to take a look at it. But um, I, I personally, at this point in time, don't recommend those more um, elaborate forms of vitamin B3 for my patients because so far it just really hasn't been worth the price take. So I hope, this, <clears throat> I hope that this information has been um, interesting and helpful. If you have any questions about this topic or anything else, just post in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer as soon as I can.